In 2017, I spent one year building an app that got zero users. Two weeks ago, I had a random startup ID in mind and it took me only three days to build the product using AI. And 24 hours later, the launch, I made 1000 US dollar in profit. In this video, I'm going to show you the software, how I got the startup ID, and especially how I use artificial intelligence in order to build really fast. Let's go. Right, let me show you real quick what the product is. It's called Poop Up. It's the landing page that you can see here. And it basically, it's a little script for websites that will display pop-up notifications like those ones. Customers would typically use it to show that they know the pain of their own customers in order to improve their website conversion rate. So this is the landing page that I built right here. As you can see, we got a couple things going on in here. And when customers are ready, they can click here and they will be prompt to pay. And once they've paid, they go to their customer dashboard. I'm going to show you that right now, right there. They can add websites. Let's say we're going to go to that website right here. And here is where they customize the pop-ups they want to send. They can add messages where each message could have text. You could have some icons and everything. People can reorganize it. And once they're ready, they will get a little script at the bottom right here. And once it's installed on their own website, they can test it. And you can see on the right side, we're going to see those notifications coming up. I have built over 20 side projects. And one of the most common questions that I get is how do you find startup IDs? And the answer is simple. I do not search for IDs, they come to me. These products, Poop Up, came after I launched Zenvoice, a little tool for Stripe users to generate invoices without paying the fee. I had a pop-up notification on the site to nudge customers into buying, and people say we love the notification, and Poop Up came up. And prior to Zenvoice, I was playing around with Shipfast, a boilerplate for Next.js developers, and I found out that I paid a lot of money for Stripe invoices, and I decided to turn those off. And I realized I needed to have some kind of product that would let me generate invoices for free. And that's how I came up with Zenvoice. And we can go back in time and the loop keeps going on. I built Shipfast because of another product, because of another product and another product. So the answer to finding startup IDs is to start somewhere, anywhere. You can build a note, note taking app, just make a better version or a version that you would use. And you're going to stumble upon real problems in your workflow. You're going to learn stuff. You can build a tiny audience. There will be things happening. And those are promising ideas for the future. I built the product poop up in three days, and I'm going to share the three ways I actually use in order to build fast. And first is that I use a code boilerplate. It's called Chipfast. It's a boilerplate I made for myself. It includes a bunch of landing page components. So I just have to fill the copy and the landing page is ready. It includes also some cool features like user login, private dashboard. With just a click of a button, it handles all the Stripe webhook events. So I have users updated in my database as soon as they pay. And so the actual final part that was missing was to create the script that would sit on my customer's website in order to display those pop-up notifications. And this is where AI comes in very handy. And I will share everything that I do with GitHub Copilot in order to build sometimes code that I don't even understand. I use GitHub Copilot in order to write code two to three times faster. It's basically ChatGPT inside of your code editor. It can write code, fix your code, explain your code, but it can also do a bunch of other stuff like generate a nice color palette or sometimes even write your copy for the landing page. It's absolutely awesome. And let me show you how it looks. I use Copilot absolutely everywhere to write most of my code and I can use it for very simple tasks to very advanced and integrated tasks. Let me show you how that works. So basically you would write plain English. Let's say I want to have an array of all the days of the week. With all the days of the week you press enter and bingo. I press tab and then he's going to create the JavaScript array with all the days of the week, which is very handy. If I want to do something a bit more advanced, I can keep typing in English and it knows the entire code of this file. And so he's going to be able to interact with it. Let's say now I am on the product. When we press test, we're going to fire some pop-up notifications at the top right. What we want to do is if the person changed to a different page, we want to remove those pop-ups. And so we need to have some kind of cleanup function. And I am familiar with React.js, but JavaScript a little less so I can just tell Copilot like if a route change user navigates away call cleanup. I press enter and boom. I press tab and GitHub Copilot generated this little event listener and we call the cleanup function which is right there that was actually created by Copilot and it's going to remove all the pop-ups that we've had. It also really good at generating copy for your website so not only code but like actually plain English, like copywriting. So here on this page, I removed, this is the headline of the page. I removed the text that was right underneath on purpose. And if we go to the hero file, we are going to see, so we have the H1 here. And this P tag here is the text that's underneath and bingo. You see Copilot already 
has a knowledge of what the product is about thanks to everything that I've uh, written previously and it knows that this p tag is underneath the h1 so it should be some kind of like helper subheadline thing and it says, oh, Poopup is a Noco tool that helps your increase visitors conversion rate by showing a Poopup to your visitors. It's not perfect. You can fine tune it. There are a bunch of ways to make the results better, but it's already a good start for the copy. And you can even use Copilot in order to do some very cool stuff like play around with multiple files in your project. So in this Poopup example, I have an API endpoint where I would basically get the script and get the data for the script to show which messages we have to display. And I can say something like a functions that fetches the data from the endpoint and return it and here we go you see that we have an entire function um, i'm going to comment that we have an entire function right here that is going to hit my api endpoint it's going to pass some parameters and i'm going to get the data back and it's going to sanitize the data and return it and it knows exactly how to write the function for my own code because if i go to that api endpoint so the script in the api part here, it knows which parameters are needed, the body, which part of the body we need, the domain, and then it's going to pass on the right parameters based on what this API endpoint needs, and it knows which data will be returned from the response. By default, GitHub Copilot is very awesome, but to make it even better, you want to use those little tips. First, you want to provide context to Copilot. So by default, when you type English, Copilot is going to create some code for you, but you want the code to be usable right away. So it means it has to hit the right API endpoint. It has to have the right variable names in order to upload your new document to the database right away. And the only thing you have to do for that is to keep tabs open. So as you can see here at the top, I have a bunch of tabs open. And especially here, I'm going to create a React component that lets users proceed to a Stripe checkout. And on the right side, I open this file here, which is an API endpoint that basically take on a few parameters, create a Stripe checkout session and return the URL. If I did not open this file, Copilot doesn't have access to it. And so when I'm going to create my React component right here, it will generate random API endpoints and it will not name the variables as you do in your code. So you want to keep all your files open. And when you do this, when you start creating your own React component, in this case, it's going to use all the files it knows from the project in order to create the right components. So here we're going to say constant button by. You see, as you can see here, the price ID here is likely to be what we're going to have somewhere here in the API. So it knows it's going to be calling this function. So it knows it needs to be passed this variable. And if I keep pressing tab enter, it's going to bingo. It creates the entire components right here with a loading state, with the call to the API. It handles, it knows when it's loading, when it's not. It's going to disable if it's not loading, handle the click, handle events. And it's going to call the right API endpoints with the right parameters right here. And this is achieved because it knows this file and this file knows how this file is working. This is my database model. It knows how users are stored in the database, which fields do they have by default copilot already knows the packages you've installed as you can see here it called those two packages at the top so you don't need to do anything for that another part that's very helpful in order to get the most out of copilot is to have your own boilerplate which means a code base that you reuse across different projects where you name variables the same way you have the same way of naming your database schemas and all that so that you already provide the foundation to copilot so it knows already how are you going to name this API endpoint, how you're going to name a new users, uh, fields in the database and all that. And the final part to leverage GitHub Copilot is to use very tiny functions that you can reuse everywhere in your code. So in this API route, we can see here, we have a function that creates the checkouts. And if you go here, we open the stripe.js file, which has a few helper functions for Stripe, such as a function to create a checkout or create a customer portal. Those are very tiny functions that have a specific use case. And this is useful because anytime I create a new API routes, for instance, Copilot will be able to reuse those functions in order to do a specific actions. And finally, in order to ship this app in three days, I use a bunch of unconventional methods, such as not using TypeScript, not using Git branches, not testing my code. I will share somewhere around here a link to that video if you want to dive into it more. And so after spending three days on the product, it was actually done and I launched it everywhere from Product Hunt, Twitter, Hacker News, and Reddit. In total, I think there was about 7,000 visitors on the site. It made $1,000 within the first 24 hours. And I think it's been four days now and it should cross $2,000 US dollar pretty soon, which is 
is pretty good for a tiny product like this one. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and you realize the power of AI, how a little guy like me can have a junior engineer and a copywriter and maybe even a secretary assistant thanks to AI. If you want to dive deeper into how I get a couple thousand visitors and the first customers on all my products, I'll link to another video somewhere where I go more into details into that. If you like the video, you can like the video. And if you loved it, you can subscribe to the channel. Until then, I'll see you for the next video and I hope you just ship it. Cheers.